so You're listening to a Mamma Mia podcast. Mamma Mia acknowledges the traditional owners of land and waters that this podcast is recorded on. And welcome to Cancelled, the podcast that looks at silly celebrity crimes and assigns charges and sentences to them so we can all move on with our lives. I'm Claire Stevens. And I'm Jessie Stevens. And before we start recording, we always do a little clap. Made me a bit nervous today. Claire, why did the clap make me nervous? Because I have a baby strapped to my front. Yeah. And I wasn't going to say anything, but this is more of a two-hander. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This podcast yeah. is not really a three-person mm. podcast, but today we are a three-person podcast. Yeah. And this is just the most precarious situation because will we make it? I don't know. Who knows? She and may scream. She hasn't done a shit in three days. <laughs> so we're worried she can do shit on the mic. Yeah. She, if you hear a fart. Honestly, we're both relieved. Uh, honestly, it's like, oh, no, that's going to distract from the podcast. But for me, great. <laughs> Stops her being so grumpy today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jesse, do you have a lazy girl story? I us? actually do have a lazy girl story. It's about a lazy girl goes camping. Oh, Which is very girls yes, don't go camping. This one does. Her partner loves camping and she does not. So their partner promised, you don't have to do anything, you don't have to set up, you don't have to blah. And she was like, fine, as long as I can just sleep on the blah mattress. That's my condition when I go camping. Yeah, yeah. I'll go, I won't be doing anything. No, I won't be setting up, I won't be pulling down. So anyway, fine, it all gets set up for her. And then that night she's on the fold-out bed lying on her stomach. At that time, this is what she writes, I felt a creeping and crawling sensation up my back. Due to my laziness and not wanting to get out of my warm bed, my solution was to just roll over and squish whatever was crawling on me with my body weight. Problem solved. I returned to sleep. That morning, I found a pancaked huntsman stuck to my (gasps) shirt. R.I.P. Lazy girl. She's a lazy girl. Oh. A lazy girl going... I've actually had this. I've been like, I'm pretty sure there's a spider in the bed. And then you just go, I mean, too lazy for fear. Too lazy for fear. Yeah, imagine it's a snake and you go, ah, it's fine. It's fine. Lay still. That's what they say. Yeah. (laughs) Lay still. And she just rolled over. She killed it. And she went, I'm too tired for all all of this. I'm too tired for a fuss. (laughs) Too tired for a squeal. And she got on with it. I love it. Lazy girls go camping. That's why we don't camp. No, no, no. Creepy crawlies. Mm. Jesse, today we're talking about Bradley Cooper. Tonight we celebrate the brilliance of writer, director, actor, producer, singer, songwriter, Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper went home empty handed at one of the year's first big Hollywood awards shows, and some people couldn't be happier about it. Is Bradley Cooper's relationship with his mom weird? People think it's odd that he still lives with her and that she has so much control over his life. They are allegedly so close that Bradley calls her several times a day. Bradley Charles Cooper mm, could have guessed that. is an American actor and director. He started his career with a guest role on Sex and the City. Did you know this? No, I didn't. He was opposite Carrie. He played Jake. You need a light? His name was Jake. He was everything I was looking for that night. Single, straight, and a smoker. You want to go for a ride in my Porsche? Fabulous. <sighs> And look, he was hot, but, but he his, wasn't Bradley Cooper. But his haircut wasn't right. His hair was too long and he wasn't Bradley Cooper yet. Wow. Yeah. And the interesting thing is that he appeared in like supporting roles for 10 years before mm. he was in The Hangover and that was his real breakout, breakout role. Moment. So he was in Alias. Oh, wow. Okay. I didn't know that. With uh, Jennifer Garner. Yeah. yeah. Wedding Crushes, Failure to Launch, Yes Man. He's just not wow. that into you. Wow, he really was a big supporting man. man. Supporting yeah, right. man. And then he does the hangover. Hello. How about that ride in? I guess that's why they call it Sin City. <laughs> you guys might not know this, but I consider myself a bit of a loner. I tend to think of myself as a one-man wolf pack. Then he went to the next level in Hollywood with Silver Linings Playbook, American Hustle, and American Sniper. And just a quick comment, too many movies have the word American American in them. Mm. They want a signpost. Yeah. It's actually a really good way, I'm pretty sure, to win an Academy Award. Yes. Just put the word American in it. Oh, absolutely. In 2018, he produced, wrote, directed and starred in A Star is Born. One of the best films ever made. What a banger. 
Yeah, it's the song. It is the song. (laughs) Like that. That's his bit. I don't think you know the words. (laughs) I can't remember it, but it goes, shallow, shallow. Absolutely. That's how it goes. (laughs) Yes. I recently watched him in Nightmare Alley. I will ask you simple questions. You will answer in short sentences only what you believe to be absolute truth. Absolute truth. What is your name? Stanton Carlisle. Are you a true medium? Yes, I am. Mr. Carlisle? Doctor, about that. Please lay down. Can you read minds? Yes, I can. That was a 2021 movie that he was in. He was nominated for awards. I think he is a fine actor. Yes. And, and, and I mean uh, very good. Yeah. I think he's a very, very good actor. This movie was quite arty and symbolic mm-hmm. and it had Tony Collette and Kate Blanchett and he just shone. May I say? He He really did. It's a great film. Okay. Before we get started on the man's crimes, Mm -hmm. a note on Aloha. Oh, no. Because after last week's episode on Emma Stone, you might think, you guys are just cancelling everyone who starred in The Offensive. And to that we say, good idea. Yeah. No, George Clooney's not Aloha. No, no. He was in another Hawaiian (laughs) film. Yeah, 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 yeah. About his children. It wasn't a great film. It was was also like, like a family movie. Yeah. But also said in Hawaii, we should do George Clooney, but maybe we will cancel everyone who was in Aloha. But we won't be talking about that today. And Jesse, why won't we be? Double Jeopardy. (laughs) (laughs) Okay? That is a concept we don't understand Understand. and refuse to Google. But something about, we already talked about it, so you can't raise it again. No, this is how it goes. If you find Emma Stone guilty of a crime, you can't find Bradley Cooper guilty of the same movie. (laughs) <laughs> that's if you Google double jeopardy, that's what it says. In the court. In the court. Nah, it yeah. says there's other things. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, really true. But so he was in Aloha. Yeah. We would like to enter the, man, into the courtroom. He was in Aloha. Yeah, but he looks like he spends time in the sun. Unlike Emma Stone. Yeah. At least he didn't play an Asian uh, character. Exactly. Exactly. My structure for today is as follows. Going too hard with a star is born. Mm. Being a Very bad bad. kisser. Maestro, points A, B, and C, Mm -hmm. and a parenting confession. Jesse, going too hard with A Star Is Born. Bradley Cooper made A Star Is Born his whole personality, (laughs) and in his defence, same. (laughs) Yeah, he did. But also, that film was... I was get a once in a generation. Oh. Was it done in the generation before by different actors? <laughs> yes. And then the generation before that? Yes. And the generation before that? Absolutely. Every generation must have a star is born. <laughs> yeah. Did he behave as though he wrote it? Yes. He did. He co-wrote it. I don't how does he co-write something that already existed? Because it was adapted. He did lots of work. He did lots and lots of work. So it was his directorial debut and it was a critical and commercial uh, success. It is. A fantastic film that I intend to watch again. Me too. After researching for yeah. this, I watched some scenes. For anyone who hasn't seen it, watch it immediately. And it's about a country rock star with a drug and alcohol addiction who discovers Ali, a struggling singer-songwriter who just so happens to literally be Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. They fall in love, they create music together, she rises to fame, and Jack's own career falls apart. Mm. Tell me something, girl. Do you write songs or anything? I don't sing my own songs. Why? I just don't feel comfortable. Why wouldn't you feel comfortable? Almost every single person has told me they liked the way I sounded, but that they didn't like the way I look. I think you're beautiful. It received a whole lot of nominations for Academy Awards. Did he win anything? Golden Globes. He didn't, but it won Best Original Song for Shallow. It won that for the Academy Awards and the Golden Globes, and it also won a Grammy. Okay. And a BAFTA Award. All right. I feel like he maybe should have won Best Actor. He was excellent. Yeah. He was excellent. The lead single, Shallow, is one of the world's best-selling singles of all time. Really? Yeah. Now, A Star is Born Slaps, discuss. (laughs) (laughs) Interesting, interesting. What I would like to put on the record is that he brought the best out of Lady Gaga. And I say that because the next thing she was in, I think, was something to do with Versace. House of Gucci? Father, son, and house of Gucci. 
House of Gucci. And her <laughs> accent was appalling. Wrong. Mm-hmm. It was apparently I very film. Chow Bella. I liked that film. It had Adam Driver and he was being tall. I thought it was good. And was her accent It wasn't as imperfect. bad as everyone made it out to be. It was only a little was bit Was it bad. Italian? She was trying to be Italian, yes. I think she's a little bit Italian. Yeah, but what was her accent like? Mm, too much. <laughs> okay. Slightly too much. I don't consider myself a particularly ethical person, but I am fair. I don't think she's had an acting performance as good as A Star Is Born. No. She was her at her best. It was her at her best, and I think that it was to do with their chemistry. And didn't she have that quote about being in a room and one person believes in well. you and it's Bradley Cooper? Well. Okay. <laughs> well. In the lead-up to the 2019 Oscars, everyone went rogue. They obviously needed a narrative. That you need a story to sell a movie to win the awards. Yeah. Like the story about how Leonardo DiCaprio almost died filming The Revenant. Did that win him an Oscar? Uh, yes. That okay. was because he, remember, he didn't he had win. one. It was really sad, yeah. And Anne Hathaway getting really emotional whenever she talked about playing Fontaine yeah. in Les Mis. Yeah, and she, she did. Yeah. And she, what did she say? Oh, no, I, no. I hope no one has to do something. No, something. no, no. She said something like, um, I dreamed it. Yeah. Like something like that and everyone got really upset because it was really... Yes. It came true. (laughs) And the story for A Star Is Born was Bradley Cooper, Lady Gaga. Love story. (gasps) Was it getting it on? At the time, Lady Gaga was engaged to a Hollywood talent agent and Cooper was dating model Irina Shayk, the mother of his child. And there were rumours those relationships were falling apart because the two co-stars had hooked up. We just had a yawn from a baby. In hindsight, those relationships did end shortly after. And I feel like it's because Bradley and Lady Gaga went too far trying to they fake were, the They were shallowing too hard. Yeah. Mm. Bradley Cooper was positioned as this movie star turned first time underestimated yet genius director who plucked Lady Gaga from obscurity, which is the plot of the movie. Yeah, that's really smart. It was like art imitating life, imitating art. Imitating art, art. yeah. I don't think he plucked Lady Gaga from obscurity. No, but she wanted to be a serious actor and he made her that. Mm. Then there was the iconic press tour line that Gaga delivered. Okay, please, can you over and over again? Not verbatim because I need to say more in my life. There can be 100 people People in a room room. and 99 of them don't don't believe believe in you. you. But all it takes is one. Bradley Cooper. And it just changes your whole life. And was she talking about Brad? Yes. Lee? Yes. Okay. Sometimes she adapted the last bit of it to say, and it was Bradley. Okay. And he was always sitting there nodding like it was the first time he'd heard it. Oh, uh, he's Mate. an actor. There's compilation videos. <laughs> You've said it a million times. There can be a hundred people in the room and there 99. There can be a hundred people in the room. You can have a hundred people in the room that are watching you. And you know, there could be a hundred people in the room. You know, a hundred people can be in a room. hundred people in the room and 99 don't believe in you. A hundred people and there can be in a one room, right? And 99 don't believe in you, but just one believes. And it can change. Then there was the story about how Bradley Cooper showed up to Lady Gaga's house for her screen test for A Star Is Born. I remember this. And they had to do it because Warner Brothers just weren't sold on her as a leading lady. But Bradley believed in her, just like in the movie. You could be in a room of 100 people <laughs> and 99 don't believe in you. And then Bradley, Bradley Cooper, Cooper says, let's go and sing shallow. <laughs> the week before the Oscars... News dropped that Lady Gaga had ended her engagement. Then at the Oscars... Was this all a bit of a... Yes! A, okay. It was all orchestrated. Yeah. Yeah. Then at the Oscars, Cooper and Lady Gaga performed a duet of Shallow mm. and they it started off eyes. opposite each other just on stools. Then he stood up, like put the microphone away, sat next to Lady Gaga. In this and they sang with what can only be described as orgasm faces. Blatantly in love. They ended the performance by gazing into each that other's eyes. That song's a bit orgasmy. Like, yeah. it's full on. It's but very everyone, emotional. Everyone was like, they're cheating. Jesse, looking <gasps> at this image, do you oh, think they're cheating? I remember this. They do be cheating. They're thinking about orgasms. Mm. She's thinking about his willy. <laughs> He's thinking about her vocals. Like, <laughs> the chemistry is off the charts. It is. They have since said, and this is wild, they were just acting. For that performance, they were acting. No, because everybody was like, "They're cheating! They're cheating! You shouldn't be that." Okay, intimate. if you're acting, then why did you actually end your relationships? Yes, they did. But I guess they were at the Oscars during that performance. The acting makes sense. But Jesse, 
Would you say that Bradley tried to be Jackson Maine in real life? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for two, three years, yeah. Went too hard. Yeah. I think he just really didn't want to be the guy from The Hangover anymore. Yeah, but, I mean, you can be in a movie without being the movie. I don't think he knows how to do that. <laughs> I, think I don't think so either. think that's been a consistent issue. And her too. I mean, she was Donatella, but Versace <laughs> Gucci for a little while. <laughs> for a little while. <laughs> Not Versace, they different. Who's Donatella? <laughs> She has blonde hair, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry about it. Being a bad kisser. Bradley Cooper starred opposite Jennifer Lawrence in Silver Linings Playbook in 2012. I'm ready. I feel motivated. I don't feel so angry all the time. The whole time you're rooting for this Hemingway guy to survive the war and to be with the woman that he loves. It's four o'clock in the morning, Pat. I can't apologize. I will apologize on behalf of Ernest Hemingway because that's who's to blame here. Yeah, have Ernest Hemingway call us and apologize to us too. Did you he like became that? very silver linings. And by yeah. that, I mean he wore that chain. <laughs> he wore that chain. Yeah. Yep. On the Graham Norton show the following year, he said that during filming, they'd done two takes of a kissing scene and Lawrence stopped him and said, You're a wet kisser. (laughs) How do you feel about that? Oh, yuck. Okay, we've got an overproduction of saliva. Yeah. Okay, here's the thing. I'd rather a wet kiss than a dry one. (laughs) You don't want a sandpaper kiss. No. But I I think think you'd want a little bit of... A little bit of wet. The problem with having a wet kisser is that that suggests that we're a little bit aroused (laughs) and that we're slobbering. (laughs) Yeah. You know, wet kisser, you know what that makes me think of? What? My eight-month-old who can't stop dribbling. She dribbles onto her belly button. Like that's how much she's drooling. Yeah. And then she tries to kiss me and she bites my tooth. Yeah. That's what I'm seeing with Bradley. There's a lot of just mouth wide open. Yeah. A lot of spit. Yeah. (laughs) A lot, a lot of spit. Bradley could learn something. Yeah. Maybe he's teething. Yeah. (laughs) He could be teething. But he said, you don't want to hear that. It was not a compliment. And so it is on the record. Bradley Cooper, not a great kisser. Okay. Although they did win the award for best kiss. See, this is part of it again. <laughs> We're being fooled. <laughs> we they are. take us as fools. <laughs> they try to create a story. Yes, they keep trying to create stories so that we'll be taken into the narrative and then let them win an Oscar mm-hmm. without us looking. Yeah. <laughs> Jesse, speaking of that, maestro, points A, B and C. Okay, haven't seen it. Neither. But Cooper wrote, directed, produced and starred. It's very A Star is Born. Okay. In Maestro. Yeah. It follows the true story of conductor Leonard Bernstein. <laughs> best known for composing several successful operas and Broadway musicals, including West Side Story. If summer doesn't sing in you, then nothing sings in you. And if nothing sings in you, then you can't make music. Okay, from the outside, I know nothing about this. From the outside, it feels very the time that Jim Carrey method acted that guy and everyone that met him was like, hey, Jim Carrey, and he was like, I'm not Jim Carrey. It's very that. Okay. Yeah. So last year, when the trailer for the movie was first released, there was a controversy about A, Mm. the nose. Cooper used a large prosthetic nose to portray Bernstein, who was Jewish. Yes. He was accused of Jew face. Oh, wow. And essentially, yep, contributing to negative stereotypes about Jewish people. The strange thing is that when you look at photos of Bernstein, he didn't have a particularly large nose. So the prosthetic seems odd. Yes, yes, I agree. But then I was recently speaking to my mother-in-law who's Jewish and she said, play on. I think they're the rules. Yeah, no, she does think that. Yeah. And the use of the prosthetic, according to Bernstein's children, did make Cooper look more like their dad. Okay. So they defended it. One very compelling argument against the prosthetic was that Cooper actually played the elephant man once in his career and used no prosthetics. So I guess it was like, must we, when we're playing a Jewish person? Okay, got it. Jesse, I've got photos. Oh, we've got Bernstein on the left and Cooper on the right. Bernstein had quite, I mean, your nose is bigger than that. (laughs) Bernstein had a very subtle nose. He had a lovely nose. Cooper has, that is comically large. (laughs) Yes. You know, it's, it's almost the BFG. It is. It's the BFG coming in at night time with your dreams. But they do look alike. <laughs> mm. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But no, that uh, he did not have a big nose. That's very interesting. Yeah, I don't think it was necessary. Maestro B, crying over Leonard. This is yet another example of Bradley going just a bit too hard. There is a video going viral that is Bradley Cooper talking about Leonard Bernstein and he simply cries. 
He talks about how much he misses Leonard, despite having never met him, and oh, how no, Bernstein... I don't like it when people do that. He says Bernstein was with him during filming. Oh, Bernstein begs to differ. It starts off and it's Bradley Cooper crying, and then, and then as the camera pans out, he is actually sitting next to Bernstein's actual children, and oh, oh. he cries because he really felt Bernstein's energy while filming. The children are not crying. They're fine. Do That's you miss him? Oh, yeah, man. What do you miss about him? It's hard to talk about. I don't know. We shared something very special. It's hard to even articulate. But he was with me, certainly, throughout the entire time. His energy has somehow found its way to me that I really do feel like I know him. Okay, so I I saw this thing over the weekend that said, like, you know, normal people that we work with, like colleagues and stuff, you know how you look at celebrities sometimes and you're like, you're cl- you're mad, mm-hmm. you're completely mad. Mm-hmm. If you interviewed anyone in our lives, like a normal colleague, like producer Talissa, you'd discover she's mad. It's just that we don't interview her. <laughs> yeah. They'd say weird stuff and do weird stuff. Yeah. Like, like I reckon cry about someone they never met. Yeah, I reckon if you interviewed producer Talissa. Yeah. You'd get a crying about Hilary Duff and you go, you're completely mad, you're completely mad. <laughs> Hilary Duff's family is here and yet you are emotionally taken by this. But what we do is we don't platform the ordinary person. And so Bradley looks unhinged. He does. Because he is so taken. It's very Oscars campaign. It is very Oscars campaign because I think tears are integral. Mm. Because Leonardo DiCaprio is crying about being attacked by a bear or whatever it was (laughs) and he was like, I need my moment, Leonard's not here, (laughs) so I'm being haunted by the ghost of Leonard. Yeah, he says he really felt him. Jesse Maestro C, yeah, the chair. Apparently when Bradley Cooper was on set directing Maestro, he banned chairs. In an interview with Spike Lee for Variety's Directors on Directors series, He said, when I direct, I don't watch playback. It's usually director sitting in the director's chair watching the screen. I don't watch playback. Uh, To me, rhythm of the day. Here's what I'll do. I'll tell you in a second. So there's no chairs on sets. I've always hated chairs. And I feel like your energy dips the minute you sit down in the chair. So Apple Box is a very nice way way to sit. Mm -hmm. And everybody's together. There's no video village. I, I hate that. Everyone lost their minds and they were like, you ever been pregnant, Bradley? Yeah. You been pregnant? You need to sit. You, you need, need to sit. sit. Cuz you got urine rolling down your leg. <laughs> Are you a fucking lazy girl? <laughs> lazy girls got to sit. Lazy girls got to sit. Oh, you're in this scene currently? Can I sit between takes, please? This is taking a lot out of me. Why can't I can't just be standing constantly. Can you imagine watching something standing? Be terrible for your lower back. Well, people said no one's working to the best of their ability cuz our feet are sore on their feet for 14 hours, and they said working 12-plus hour days without being allowed to sit is inhumane. Yeah. I'm actually in defence of Bradley because everyone just needs to come the fuck down here. <laughs> he didn't say no one's ever allowed to <laughs> sit in a chair. He just said on set. Picture a set, there's on set, and then there's off set. I feel like he's saying no one anywhere can sit in a chair. <laughs> I don't think that's what he's saying. And I think this is the problem with the internet. The man makes one tiny <laughs> comment about how he, as a director doesn't sit, and everyone's like, you're ableist against people who need to sit. And it's like, I think he thinks chairs are fine and have their place. (laughs) I think chairs have their place. I think he's walking through New York or wherever he lives, sees a chair, he spits on it. He He yells at anyone sitting down. He says, get up. I don't believe it. (laughs) You're not doing your best work. Get up, takes a chair. Well, what am I meant to do now? I'm at a cafe. (laughs) Stand and have your coffee. I just don't think that's what he was saying. I think it's discriminatory against you. I didn't see this coming up. Yeah. But I think the man has to embrace chairs. <laughs> I don't think he's policing everyone. I just don't. I, I think, think he, he was, I think he's coming to restaurants. I think he made a throwaway comment and, again, he was probably trying to play into the narrative, I'm this eccentric director. And it's, okay, in Bradley Cooper's defence, he's a white man and the narrative is hard. <laughs> and I think that's, already... we don't give a white man enough credit for how hard it is to make a narrative. Exactly. Because I don't think he grew up poor. Ah, uh, no. He's not queer. Mm-mm. He became famous quite easily. Yes. He's very traditionally good looking. And this was the same issue with Leonardo DiCaprio, which is why he had to get in the warpath of a bear <laughs> in order to win an award. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's what Bradley Cooper's doing. And he's the thing about those Oscars. He's like, movies. no, Claire, they're like, you know what you need is an antagonist, like a villain. Yeah. And he's like, chair. <laughs> and it's like, mm, <laughs> not a no, great not antagonist. Yet. Not yet. Not as good as a bear. No. He won't win. He won't win. No, he won't this. win. He's tried too hard. No. I think we can all agree on that. Yeah. 
Absolutely not. There's also not been that much hype. No, sorry. He absolutely will not win anything for Maestro. I have a baby who's purring. (laughs) She's purring. She thinks that chairs slap. Now, Jess, the thing about Bradley is obviously with every role, he's got to have a story that backs up the role that he's playing. Is he a musician? No, he did that with, um, what was he? Jack? Jack. Yeah. He liked to sing. Yeah. He's beautiful. But, yep, apparently when he was a kid, he wanted to be a conductor. Okay. No shame to conductors. If you ever met a kid who wants to be a conductor, (laughs) I mean that politely. No. I would rather play the triangle than be the conductor. He wanted a baton as a child. And he used it. That's plainly not a true story. And, okay, he's very dismissive. Uh, he did like a round table and he was talking to Emma Stone, actually, friend yes. of the, of the courtroom. <laughs> yes. And I uh, saw so you in Aloha. <laughs> we don't talk of Aloha. Never met you before, Emma. Oh, no, you start opposite her in a terrible film. <laughs> but Emma Stone was talking about poor things. Yep. And Bradley Cooper made this comment that was like, you know, that's the kind of role you don't just find out six months before that you're doing it. You've really got to prepare for it. Yes. And he was clearly trying to be like, that's like me playing Leonard and Jackson. And Killian Murphy was mm. also on that round table. Killian and- Murphy is on every round table. Well, everyone thinks that Bradley was taking a dig oh. at Killian because he only found out about Oppenheimer six months <gasps> Before, and he's going to win. And he's going to win. So everybody oh, at nice. the awards shows he has been, help. like, taking yeah. screenshots of Bradley having beef with Killian, <laughs> even though he, he doesn't explicitly, but he definitely thinks Killian is lazy. He doesn't have beef with Killian. He has beef with Cher. <laughs> yeah. He thinks Killian sits too much. <laughs> he does. He does. Everyone's sitting at the round table. Get up. <laughs> so with the Star is Born... Imitating life because he was Jackson being He like, also um, battled with sobriety. He has been sober for a okay, long Okay, and now he's trying to do art imitating life. I'm with, a conductor. I've always wanted to be a conductor. Well, first we've heard of it. And I think in preparing for that role, he spent a stupid amount of time learning to conduct, which again is not the necessary. Of, it's not, not necessary. necessary because honestly, do, you Wave could be your hand. a Harry Potter star doing bloody abracadabra or whatever you do in Harry Potter and I'd go, there you are conducting. Yeah. I'd never understand it. You know, okay, here we go. I'm going to upset people. I'm going to get cancelled. What? I think conducting is pointing at who you want to play the instrument <laughs> and going up. That's what you're doing. <laughs> that I'm is pointing absolutely to not it. Yeah. It's pointing at you and going violin and then you <laughs> point at guitar because, you know, guitar is also there and then you go la, 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 la. I think that... <laughs> They are faking it. Okay, you're going to upset all our conductor listeners, of which there are many. Well, I, d- I don't know. I don't think that it's real. Okay, well, Bradley is trying to be a conductor and okay. he's also trying to be Leonard and he's trying to grieve Leonard, <laughs> which is strange because he died <laughs> he in 1990. He hasn't met Leonard. Jesse, a parenting confession. Bradley Cooper and his former girlfriend, Irina Shake became parents to their daughter, Leah, in 2017. Mm. On a recent episode of Armchair Expert. Yeah, listen to it. And did you know Bradley is best friends with Dax, Shepard? I, I did glean that, yeah. Yeah. Cooper said it took some time to connect with his daughter and for the first few months of her life he didn't feel that protective love everyone talks about. Your DNA is going to tell you that there's something more important than you. I remember the first time I realised, because everyone's like, I would die in a second for my kid. I'm always like, if I'm being honest, uh, I don't know. Like the first yeah. like eight months, I'm like, I don't even know if I really love the kid. We don't know it's her yet. It's dope. It's cool. <laughs> I'm watching this thing morph, fascinated by it, love taking care of it. Would I die if someone came in with a gun? It's only a couple of months. And then all of a sudden, it's like, no question. That's what he said to Dax. I, I love that. And then Dax jumped in and said, you don't know if they're an asshole. And I was like, <laughs> good point, Dax. That's exactly it. Dax. That's exactly it. He said he grew to love his daughter. Your baby could be a racist. I know. Your baby could could be be a thief. Yeah. (laughs) Your baby could be a murderer. You don't know yet. That's why magically at eight months you discover they're not any of those things. Yeah, actually quite lovely. So he said he grew to love his daughter a few months later. He said, I'm not sure I'd be alive if I wasn't a dad. Again, very dramatic. Mm. I just needed someone to say, we're going to drop this massive anchor because this is going to dictate everything you do from now on. Your DNA is going to tell you that there's something more important than you. Now, everybody lost it being like, why would you say that knowing your daughter could hear that? 
when she grows up. Mm. Relatedly, why would you say that full stop? There was a lot of criticism about it. Well, I don't agree. I, I, quite, I found it very, very refreshing. And if I was little Leah, hearing my dad talk about how much he loves me, and I think he says in it that I don't know if it's him or Dax, but they look their daughters in the eyes and it's the first time they've looked someone in the eyes and thought, I love you unconditionally. No matter mm. what you do, I will, like, love you. I quite like that. As you said that. Uh, there's a Matilda. mouse purring. <laughs> Matilda yeah. just made a little bit of a noise. I'm here. But I completely agree with that. I actually think that there is something really profound and helpful about him sharing that. Yeah. I think dads need to hear that, that mm-hmm. it can take some time yep. to connect with your child. I have many friends who have said similar things and I think him saying it publicly very refreshing there's no way his daughter's going to resent that later but did he Oscar too hard I mean is this just classic I need to drop another bombshell yeah and that's been the criticism Jesse there's been a few responses do you want to read yeah I will okay I get what he's saying but why would he say this (laughs) I think that really sums it all up doesn't it I often think that on TikTok Mm. yeah I get what you're saying I feel yeah I feel like he didn't have to tell the world this LMFAO. I disagree, Francesca. I think it's helpful. (laughs) Okay, and then we've got from Jake, Batman couldn't beat this info out of me. (laughs) Yes, I don't know. I think he's just coming at the Oscar from all angles. He is. The white man thing, and look, I love white men, but, like, you got to find your vulnerability. Tell me something, girl. And that in order to win yeah. the Oscar, and I think he's just trying to find it. Well, he also shared a story being like, my dad showered naked and I showered with him. And everyone's like, who <laughs> keeps interviewing him and what question garnered that answer? Was it in a seedy way? Because showering naked is quite commonplace. Yeah, no, no, no. It wasn't seedy, but everyone's like, it's just non-information I need to know <laughs> that he showered with his father when he was a child. He's on a press tour. Doesn't got a lot to say. No. There's and every great... time he says that he's connecting with the dead, people get weird. Mm. And then he starts crying and people are like, this feels OTT. Yeah. So he's like, fine, I shower naked. Yeah. And everyone's like, that's not, <laughs> that's not particularly that interesting. interesting either. There was a really interesting column around the time that A Star Is Born came out and this great interviewer interviewed him, did a profile, and she said in it he gave her the exact same information he had given to every other interviewer. It's actually very hard and very clever. It's quite disciplined. Mm. And she was clearly frustrated as she was writing it, saying, I am trying to get something, but he is just sharing the exact same information. Every time she tried to, like, push into something personal, he didn't want to talk about it. And at the end she said, maybe he just wants his work to stand for itself. I think he does. And maybe that's okay. And he keeps the controversies at bay. Yeah, he's like, dating Gigi Hadid. Like, why didn't I know that till yesterday? I know. I think he's quite good at just letting the work speak for itself. I mean, he's a little earnest, but what what actor isn't? Yeah, he's incredibly earnest. Yeah. yeah. As you know, we've been doing our part. It's hard for lazy girls. It's hard every day. And so we've been giving back. And we know that there is one thing that lazy girls love more than anything in the whole world. Claire, what is it? Sleep. Lazy sleep. girls sleep. We don't hard. actually have sleep issue unless we're too lazy to actually go to sleep. But once we're asleep, we do very well. We love sleep. Mm-hmm. We we'll do anything for a good night's sleep. We are giving away some sleep wellness bundles from AH Beard. What is that I hear you ask? Well, I have some information. I will elaborate. It has a rest on sleep tracker. It accurately measures your heart and respiratory rate, sleep cycles, bedroom humidity, temperature, and body movement. Claire, you know that thing? All the people who are trying to live forever have this. Yes, and that's actually super handy because people say, oh, well, why don't you track your sleep with your Apple Watch? I can't. It needs to charge overnight. Oh, wow. That's why you need a rest on sleep tracker. Well, you'll get one if you win this prize. You'll also get an Orb Smart Sleep Light. It helps you fall asleep easily and wake up naturally with soothing music and light. I went to buy one of these at like a, get them for babies. A, fancy, mm. a fancy shop. Super expensive. Yeah, well, it, no. Because they're actually really, really good. Yeah, they make such a difference. Also, two times gel-infused memory foam pillows. Because the thing about lazy girls, come on, what's your pillow like? Is it yellow? Has it gone yellow? Because you had it for too long because who replaces pillows? And then you, you change the case and it says on it, yeah, throw this out in April 2012 and you're like well it's I didn't know my that. pillow had a use by date but there you go and then you put your case back on it you put it down you go why is my skin so bad because you haven't replaced your pillow 
<laughs> if you're a lazy girl who is always tired, those things really seem to overlap. And mm. you might be thinking, I really want this, but I can't be bothered to fill out a form or write my 25 words or I'm in bed. <laughs> well, honey, I'm, I'm in bed. I don't have anything near me and I shan't be getting up. Well, we don't want you to get up Mm-mm. because if you're already a subscriber, then guess what? You're in the running. But if you want to go into the running for this giveaway and all future Lazy Girl giveaways, you need to visit giveaways.mamamia.com.au to become a Mamma Mia subscriber. If that's too much information, there's a link in the show notes. Just follow that. Jesse, it's time for Charges and Sentences. I've got my charge. Being too American. Oh, my gosh. He's so American. He grew up in Philadelphia. Okay. Yep. See, that makes sense. So it's very American sniper, American. He might as well have called this the American conductor. I think he would have won if it was called the American conductor, Mm. but instead he went with maestro. Mm. (laughs) My sentence is... Hide your want, it's unseemly. Let me elaborate. Usually we cancel women for ambition. I am finding Bradley's ambition (laughs) uncomfortable to sit with. (laughs) It is. He is wearing it too strongly, like a fragrance with too many squeezes. Squirts, yeah. Squirts. And it stinks. He wants an Oscar too badly. Yeah. Like when Leo wanted an Oscar too badly. And then he had sex with a bear. <laughs> yes. Yes, well said. Mm. Well said. And I think it's very American to say what you want as though you're entitled to it. And to want so hard. And to want so hard and so loudly. And I just think want privately, want in your journal. You also potentially have enough. Don't. Bradley, you're doing very well without that many awards. I think he will not stop hustling until he has that Oscar under his belt and he feels so hard done by. Is he just going to go harder and harder? Yeah, he's, he's going to go harder. An award. <laughs> and he knows that the algorithm, he put into an AI machine, he said, what's going to win me an Oscar? And they said, have you tried representing an American male from the past? And he's like, great idea. Who should I do? How about a conductor? <laughs> great. How should I win? Pretend you wanted to be a conductor as a child. Oh, my goodness. Because a conductor is much like a director in terms of control and art and performance. Mm -hmm. So, again, art imitating life. That's what the AI told him to do. Mm -hmm. Did it turn out a good movie? Allegedly not. What do we think he's going to do next? He's got to do something. Like, A Star is Born was already pretty full on. And then he went more full on. What with having a different face for the movie? I think he's going to portray Abraham Lincoln in the American Abraham. (laughs) And he's going to wear facial hair and he's going to go full No, method. Daniel Day-Lewis already did that and Bradley Cooper's favourite actor is Daniel Day-Lewis. Okay. So who's he going to be? Mm. Donald Trump? Well, that would be fun. I was going to say, is he going to be Obama? And it's like, honey, <laughs> you can't do you that. You can't do that. That's one you can't do. <laughs> it's not right. Absolutely not. It's not right. So I want him to want less. Yeah. Publicly. Yes. My charge. Yes. You said it, Jess, and, and it's what I've been thinking from mm. the beginning. Yeah. He's too earnest. Yeah. Yep. Far too earnest. Takes himself very seriously. Yep. But that is something about actors and Americans and American actors. There's something about earnestness that makes me want to come up to them quite close with a stick and just poke them and be like, (laughs) why are you like this? Yeah, I've got a remote here. Mm. Don't you hate yourself though? (laughs) Hey, you. Don't you hate yourself? Why do you think you deserve good things? Yeah. In Australia, our inner monologue puts us down. And that's why we hate successful people. Yeah. Don't you think you're you're a piece of shit? <laughs> no, I don't. I think I'm a brilliant actor. That's why your on screen presence one of us. is excellent. <laughs> it's genuinely excellent. So I think as a sentence, I just need him to challenge his earnestness. And genuinely, it's actually quite a genuine sentence. Lean back into comedy, mate. You were doing really well at comedy. Yeah, but he's never gonna win an Oscar by the hangover. Yeah, I think he's gotta let that go. So the hangover. He was excellent. He's actually got great comic timing mm. and I think maybe he just needs to take the pressure off and then he can go do his Oscar You know what movie. he should do? Hang on one sec. I've decided what he's going to do. Jim Carrey mm. is the like poster boy for method acting when he went full ma- method for Andy Kaufman, mm-hmm. right? 
everyone would come up and be like, hey, Jim, and he'd be like, hey, I'm Andy. We did an episode about it. We did. We did a whole episode about it. I've heard of people who were just like so excited to meet Jim Carrey. They were like, oh, my goodness, it's Jim. And he was like, who's Jim? Right? I'm Andy. Yeah. That's confusing. This is the Oscar-winning performance for Bradley. Do a movie about Jim playing Andy. Yeah, it's so meta. Yeah. (gasps) Yeah. About how he lost his mind when he played because I'm pretty sure Jim made a documentary about when he played Andy. Mm. But if Bradley was to play Jim playing Andy when he goes, Method, who is he, Andy or Jim? I know. I know. I think that or all the Method actors in a movie together. They would clash. They'd be they brawls. would. They They'd would. Be brawls. Yes, because of- they're all from different time zones. As in, like, I'm Andy. I'm from 1982. Yeah. Well, I'm Abraham Lincoln, <laughs> and I'm from 19. 19- I don't know when all any of these people were alive, but I'm from 1908. And he takes off his top hat, and then they start fighting and yeah. brawling. Yeah. And it's like this is a great documentary. <laughs> also, it's comedy. <laughs> exactly, it ticks all the boxes. Yeah. Jesse, that is all we have time for on Cancel today. I would just like some kudos for making it through this podcast with a baby who has remained asleep. This is ridiculous. This is the best she has ever been. Is she oinking? Absolutely. Did she make a noise, annoying noises? That will upset the producers. Yes. <laughs> but, oh well, she didn't scream. And she hasn't done her big poo yet. Yet. We'll save that for the car seat. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. You can follow us on the twins underscore thoughts on Instagram where, yeah, I'm posting receipts. You may have noticed lately. I'm only a week late. (laughs) So the executive producer of Cancelled is Talissa Pizzazz with audio editing by Tom Lyon. And we will be back next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.